Hey everybody! Today we will be taking a look and a review of the NanoPi Neo 4 from Friendly Arm. So let's jump into the hardware overview and then the benchmarks. So first there appears quote unquote to be two USB 3.0s but in fact it's only a USB 3.0 and a USB 2.0 so they used a cost saving measure of getting a USB 3.0 double socket and one is physically wired as 2.0 the other is physically wired as 3.0 I found that out um, through testing because the top port was getting a consistent 33 megabits a second and I was just like uh, what you know that that should be a lot higher and I switched to the bottom port and I was getting my three four five hundred megabit so uh, for me I'm going to probably go through and take a black marker and mark that just so I can remember down the road because I know me and I will forget that it does have a uh, gigabit Ethernet and a 40 pin GPIO and it is a very very fine pin pitch GPIO it's not your standard uh, 40 pin GPIO like uh, the K2 here so it is a very fine pitch uh, 40 pin over here there is uh, an 8 pin GPIO uh, I think it's the I squared C and stuff like that uh, then we have a camera connector back here our Wi-Fi card my optional eMMC module which is a 16 gigabyte and there you can see a RAM chip. On the back side, I have a fan because I've already modified this. Um, we have a USB Type C power connector and or uh, OTG uh, USB 2.0. So if you have a, I have one here. There it is. If you have a USB uh, Type C eh, divider device that breaks out a USB port and a Type C power port, then you can use an additional USB off of that port and HDMI, uh, which I do believe does 4K 30. It's a HDMI. 2.0 and here you can see my fan power connector is on uh, the uh, I can't remember what power bus uh, or what I squared C or uh, UART might be UART by the way it's a 5 volt bus right there and then behind it, it this is another 8 pin header the uh, header behind it can be used as another USB 2.0 port so this total has three USB 2.0s and one USB 3.0 port and of course on the bottom we have our giant heat sink I have put f uh, little feet on it to hold it up off of the uh, surface just so I can get a little bit more airflow through it and I doubt you will be able to see it, but you can see the copper color down in there. So I have a uh, I have 3.5 millimeter copper shims in here uh, between the heat sink and the uh, CPU to do a more direct cooling, and it does work fairly well with the heat sink and a thermal pad and the fan this idles or uh, 
sorry, not idle, uh, under load hits about 56C. With copper shims, though, this hits about 36 to 42C uh, at the highest. Without the fan, this will get as hot as uh, the CPU registers, which is about 85 but it stays constant at 85, so it does really good. It doesn't thermal throttle or anything. Um, with the thermal pad, it doesn't thermal throttle either, but the uh, heat sink doesn't dissipate the heat as fast as uh, the copper shims, or it doesn't get the heat as fast as the copper shims, I, say, I guess, uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Oh, one little tidbit. The fan, as you can see, there the two screws there. I have them screwed into the fins, and it works really well. As you can see, it only has about half of it blowing over the heat sink, and the other half blows over the top of the board, and it works out really well. I do really enjoy this little computer. So, uh, yeah, let's jump into the benchmarks. Button. For power consumption, we will be using my uh, USB power meter thing. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, the iDROC or something like that. It says USB electric electronic load device on the bottom so it's really helpful uh, but we will get our power usage um, at full load and idle from here so we can figure out you know how many watts it uses because some of these require a fair bit of wattage I will be using a uh, 5 volt power supply that friendly elect cells or friendly arm uh, this is rated at 5 volts and 4 amp but uh, my testing shows that these are 5 volt 3 amp and it's just overrated uh, let me double check yeah 4 amp so it says 4 amp but I can only get it to sustain 3 amp and that is dropping the voltage down to 4.75 volts so that is barely in the range of 5 volt USB devices but this will be our power supply and for all USB uh, benchmarking uh, we'll be doing DD testing with read and write and for all that we will be using this M.2 SSD it's a fairly fast uh, 4, 4 c 4 site uh, it's a Chinese brand SSD but it is fairly fast um, so that's that way we have the fastest device we're copying to um, so yeah USB 2 and 3.0 testing will be done on this our SD cards are all 10 uh, class 10 or higher um, I mean, actually they're all class 10 I don't have any uh, class uh, UHC 3 or whatever they're called so all class 10 SD cards so the performance is all on the boxes themselves so that's all just one to Hey, uh, I'm going to push the button now. Let's jump into the actual videos. I wanted to do a quick shot showing my setup here. So we have the Neo 4 with Ethernet and power. That power comes over to here where we have our... Uh, oh power shower I kind of like a kilowatt for uh, electronics and then down here 
you can see our power supply. So, that's all. Just wanted to show you it set up. As you can see here, the benchmark is starting up, and here is a completely full load on the CPU. It's at 100% across all six cores, and you can see it's dancing right around 1.75 amps. I'm hoping you can make head or tails of this chart, but as you can see on the far left we have the Neo 4 averages, and I, the legend you can see at the top right, so we have the uh, single core 1000 score took only 0.27 seconds, and then the single core 5000 score took 2 seconds. Uh, the multi-core thousand score took 0 0.086 seconds. Um, uh, going down the line, 0.51, and then we start increasing all the way up to 10 seconds at 50k. And then the Minecraft server build took 64.7. Again, these are all averages and you can pause the video to check out the other scores for the other uh, computers. So, that was an interesting video, wasn't it? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, gotta love video editing. Anyways, you will see me in the next video. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. If you just like the video, well, you know how that other button works. And, um, yeah, you'll see me in the next video. Bye!